Welcome to Zeiss Full Exposure, the video podcast that goes behind the scenes with some of the industry's most innovative visual storytellers. Now here's your host, photographer and filmmaker, Jim Camp. Each year in October, thousands of pro photographers and enthusiasts descend on the Javits Convention Center in Midtown Manhattan to fork over 15 bucks for a cold turkey sandwich listen to experts in the field, and fondle the latest gear at the largest photo equipment exhibit in the U.S. The 2019 Photo Plus Expo was no exception. We sat down to chat with just a few of these photographers at the most recent expo. Brian Mateusz is a widely published photographer, author, and Zeiss ambassador based in Utah who fuses landscape and travel photography with experiential storytelling and educational ventures, helping emerging photographers hone their craft through his podcasts and tutorials. Brian Mateusz, thank you for joining us. You're a very well-renowned travel photographer. Oh, well, thank you. Is that news to you? I, I guess <laughs> so, yeah. I just like taking photos. Um, you said something before we came on just about uh, what it's like uh, you know, for people that don't do it or that people might want to get involved in travel photography, pursue it as a career. What does it mean to be a travel photographer? What does it mean for you? I mean, that's, that's, I think, the question. That's the question anyone needs to ask themselves, especially before they leave for a trip, for example, or if they want to pursue a career in it, uh, is what does it mean to you? Uh, what do you want to get out of it? More importantly, what do you want to share with the world? Uh, yesterday, last night, we went, there was a, an event, a, a rock music masterclass that Greg Waterman, who's a, a fellow Zeiss ambassador, presented at. And it was really great because he talked about the, the, the work that you put out. It, it has to be your best work every time. When you think about the term travel photography, it's such a nebulous term. It's such a huge term. It can be, you know, iconic architecture. It could be uh, the people. It could be the food. It could be the culture. And so being able to have that, you know, what does that mean to you? Uh, as far as what does travel photography mean to you, and then also how could you go about infusing your own individual style? It's not just going somewhere, like booking a flight somewhere, and then uh, you know taking photos of, of these famous places and leaving. Like I want to take something beyond just the photo from the location. Well, you talked about um, when you go to a location, uh, one of the things that you'd recommend for anybody that's doing it is to not necessarily do too much research. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so I think, I mean, now is like, there's, there's no better time to be a photographer as far as preparing. You know, there are apps on your phone that can tell you the specific elevation and direction of sunlight for, you know, at any place on the earth. Um, the problem is that, perfect example is when I went to Cambodia. Um, I, in my mind, it was my first time and I just want to take a photo of Angkor Wat, which is one of their most famous, picturesque temples. So I thought, all right, let me start preparing. You know, well, let me see what the architecture looks like. Let me see what the surrounding area looks like. And what I ended up finding, you know, myself doing, like going through Google and you know, 500px and Flickr and seeing all of these different photos, was I found myself thinking, I'm going to end up creating someone else's photo inadvertently and not my own. And so I think, you know, since then what I've done is kind of limited myself, one, in time, but two, in, the, the in what kind of information I allow myself to research. So I'm focusing more on weather patterns, you know, what, are there any distinct features or bodies of water? Is there any construction going on if it's, an, you know, some sort of architecture, which there was uh, at the time on the temple. And so that I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to photograph. But I don't have, like, I, my, my brain is not filled with 10 other amazing photos that have been taken by other people because I don't want to recreate someone else's photo. I wouldn't do it intentionally, but it's funny how the subconscious works. Allow yourself to kind of be present in the moment and not be influenced too much by what you see online, by what other people do. But especially if you've never been somewhere, you're going somewhere new, uh, I really recommend limiting, uh, tempering your research time. What are your, what's your like minimal travel 
bag like? There's that kind of famous lens trinity that people talk about. I go with primes. I have my, my prime lens trinity. There are three bodice lenses. There's the 18 millimeter, there's a 40 millimeter, and the 135 millimeter. That's what I take with me. Don't burden yourself with the gear. You talked also about when you get to a location, it was kind of interesting. You, um, it, it almost sounded like a journalistic approach. Like when you get to a spot, you like it, it, it moves something in you. It's hard to uh, quantify that sometimes. Sit still, yes. right? Yep. Uh, it depends on your goal. In, in these cases, I believe you're, they're, they're trying to document life happening. And so my philosophy is let life happen. And by that, I mean like find a, a corner, blend in with the wall. I want to be as invisible as possible. So, uh, you know, when I was in Cuba, I was in Havana a few years ago, um, I found this one corner and I stayed there for a few hours. It's just one corner. And in just, you know, 240 degrees in front of me, I saw all these different things happen. Just It allows your mind to kind of clear up um, and, and, and just observe, you know, rather than relying on a 20 frame per second burst, you know, you want to anticipate the motion. Uh, there's a, a very famous pedestrian crosswalk in Tokyo called Shibuya, Shibuya Crossing. It is insane. I mean, if you want to know what it feels like to be a fish with other fish swimming around you, go there at rush hour and, and just stand in the middle of that. It's, it's one, I think, the world's busiest intersection. And so I focused on capturing motion, people moving and vehicles moving through the frame. And that also had, that was a very specific uh, project with a very specific stylization technique. And, and you really owe it to yourself to, to study. To, what I mean by study is stand there and, and analyze what's in front of you. The photo itself will take on a much richer story. You mentioned story. Um, does story come into play when you travel to a location before, or during, or after, or a combination? Uh, you know, I, I'm from Brooklyn here, and you know, my father, I, he always talked about like his Cuban cigars, and there's always this like, you know, cachet to them because they were supposedly illegal; you couldn't import them. But in my mind, I always equated Cuba with cigars, and so when I went. One of the things I focused on is body of work of the locals who, who smoke cigars. It's amazing how many people just walk around smoking their cigars. It has a significance to me because I, growing up, that's just something I remember. You know, my father, oh yeah, I got, I got my Cuban cigars. And it's just something special to me. You know, it's not always, the story doesn't have to be for other people. It could be for yourself. Um, and also kind of take the time before you go, learn a few key phrases in whatever uh, you know language, the local language. I mean, think beyond just taking the photo. Well, this is part of research as well, and I, I'm going to discuss this. Like, there are plenty of amazing resources, like Duolingo, this app that you can get on your phone, that will teach you common phrases in any language. Like, show that respect, even if it's broken. Uh, the, you know, the way you speak. I can tell you that people will appreciate that, that you're making that effort. And then, then you can kind of descend into the whole hand, you know, uh, 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 sign language type of communication, gestural communication. But take that time and, 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 and try to communicate. Trust me, I mean, from experience, it, it, it does wonders in opening up once you've established that kind of communication with the individual. What a, what a great sentiment that is. I mean, you know, because I think a lot of people go to places and don't think about that. Don't think about connecting with the people that you're uh, interacting with, you know, and that's, that's, that's really cool. Listen, you have an obligation. Don't, these are not objects. These are people, they're humans. And in some cases, some cultures, photos are, that's a, that's a, a very serious thing. There's something spiritual about it for the good or the bad. And so it's your obligation to at least make an effort to show your appreciation. Thanks, Brian. That's a, that's a, that's a great way to end. Thanks. Thank thanks you. a lot. Appreciate it. And thanks to Zeiss for uh, bringing me out here. The Zeiss Bodice, exclusive to Sony's full-frame mirrorless camera system. It captures sharp images in corner-to-corner -corner clarity, giving depth of field and focus distance via an OLED display. That's inspiration made by Zeiss. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time for another edition of Full Exposure. 
To listen to an extended version of this interview, go to ZeissFullExposure.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And to learn more about the latest equipment from Zeiss, head over to Zeiss.com. This has been a production of Sugared Studios.